what is up YouTube uh, the topic for today's video would be a comprehensive tutorial on the Databricks platform uh, as you might have seen my previous video where I kind of cover very basics of the platform uh, in this uh, video we're going to try to cover a bit more in detail so if you would have noticed in the previous video I kind of uh, showed how to get started with uh, onboarding with the platform but uh, usually that's not the case um, in uh, usually like a, a platform administrator in the company kind of sets the, it up with the right permissions and the user, user permissions but uh, and uh, you as a data engineer slash data analyst slash data scientist are kind of using the platform uh, in terms of collaboration during the development work so uh, this tutorial will more focus on like actual platform and how you can kind of uh, uh, develop your jobs, develop uh, data transformations and kind of go from there to like productionizing your jobs uh, and etc. So this would be more on a, on the data engineering side of uh, using the platform. So uh, lately I've been going through a few of the, the, the documentation uh, on the Databricks platform and it's quite extensive already I'm seeing it. Uh, quite impressive they, the, how, the, how they have laid it out. In this video, I'm also going to try to cover a few pending concepts which I did not introduce. And then uh, we're going to look at uh, the database, uh, the Databricks architecture. And uh, we'll do a, I'll do a small demo of the platform and like how to navigate it through. And then we'll just go ahead with just uh, like building jobs and uh, try to deploy it and schedule it uh, like production workload. So let's get started. Uh, let me quickly share my screen. So yeah, lately, as I mentioned, I'm kind of going through the documentation, as you can see here. Uh, the best thing is uh, it is kind of uh, done track wise. So like for me as a data engineer, I'm going to go, I've been through the data engine track already. So I, where I like see like how to get started with the platform and uh, how you kind of build your jobs from there and then do production, like scheduling of your jobs. So very convenient. So let's look at a few pending concepts I did not introduce previously. So uh, let's look at the current data problem. And like this is quite stated by uh, one of the guys at Dataflex. The common theme is uh, the data is the new oil. Uh, companies like all these companies are collecting this huge amount of data, which is like right now unstructured, coming from uh, a lot of ingestion streams, and then. Um, they have all this data, but uh, they don't know how to use it, right? So this data then can uh, kind of help uh, to derive a lot of business insights and eventually help with the growth of the company. So that's the current narrative. Uh, for a long time, that's been a narrative uh, for the data. This seems to be like a very, a very good philosophy, uh, but there are actually a lot of issues here. So, so this data, like in a lot of the places, also based on my experience, is not properly being ingested. So they are not getting the right columns. Uh, the, the quality of the data is a problem when they're merging a lot of data from different countries, the, the kind of columns which overlap with da different data. So eventually the quality is kind of a mess. And then this one more problem is like uh, with these batch pipelines, sometimes uh, someone is leaking, uh, i.e. like not working. Uh, then the data is not like up to date and um, then there's a lot of like uh, a lot of uh, management overhead of uh, usage and permissions and etc to work around with data getting the access to the right data if the data is lying at multiple places then it becomes a, a, a big uh, overhead in, ter in terms of getting the right permissions so uh, the data is there definitely it can be used very properly but uh, uh, there still a lot of uh, problems which exist I would say so hence, like that's where the, the data breaks kind of comes in and they say like, oh, we've got this unified platform, which is kind of based, uh, the, the, the backbone is based on a core layer of Apache Spark, uh, which every big data engineer must be using. And then they've got this Delta Lake, uh, which they recently are promoting is, uh, is around like storing the data, uh, storing the data into blob storage, but uh, having a lot more features than just being a blob storage and then productionizing workloads um, and plus also like deploying models. So based on this uh, core concepts, they say, oh yeah, we, we've got this uh, uh, figured out in like one of our unified platform, they call it the unified analytics platform and, and that's how it's kind of spread out. And this platform kind of works for everyone in this case. So starting from a data engineer where, uh, where it's like our job to 
uh, hook up the right uh, spots for getting the data, building the right pipelines, and pulling all the data together in one place so that other people can work around it. And then uh, there's another side of it, uh, because this data is already there uh, in structured uh, uh, databases or tables, then uh, a, a data analyst uh, or a business analyst can easily uh, hook in through and look at the data using simple SQL queries, right? And then there's one, one part of it is like, which is uh, of data scientists. The data scientists uh, definitely wanna use this data to predict things in the future, right? So that's where they kind of fit everything all together uh, using this platform, which has uh, a comprehensive way of doing things, developing things using notebooks, using SQL, and all of this has a very good foundation of uh, Apache Spark and uh, then Delta Lake. And one more thing to it is it's kind of de deployed, like it's it's a service, so it's, it's use, using it and then it's, it just gets deployed in one of your preferred cloud platform. Uh, right now it's two, but I think they, they are planning to include uh, the Google Cloud as well. As in for the next part of video, let's actually look at exploring uh, a Databricks workspace, uh, which has already been set up in the previous tutorial. When you log in to your platform, you're gonna see something like this. So this is the home screen. Uh, basically, you, you, uh, there are like few quick options you can use through it. It shows like all the recent things, uh, recent uh, open things, common tasks you can do. And then you can always click on the explore quick start tutorial as a beginner create a blank notebook, something like that. And moving on, uh, then on the left, you'll see the navigation bar. It's, so on the left, uh, they got like uh, five to six options in place. So the home, if you click on home or workspace, it's quite similar. Uh, it's just like a file explorer thing. Uh, so right now I've got a few quick start notebooks in place. Uh, it's just like a file explorer. I can go there and delete them or improve, uh, clone them, uh, super simple. And then these two are covered, like after that, then there's like a recent tab, which shows uh, uh, which recent items you have opened up, uh, which is good. Uh, so this is like mostly right now revolving around you creating stuff or you're creating a notebook there and kind of using it. Uh, uh, let's move on to the next tab, which is like the data tab. Oh, th this is quite interesting. Basically, uh, this is where you would be able to see all the data bases and the tables being created. So, so the D Databricks uh, platform, uh, uh, once you import the data, there are like, there's an easy UI way of doing it, but otherwise you can do it through code too. So once you create a table, uh, uh, the table it, it's gonna pop up here. Basically this table has been created and all the data is actually not hosted uh, into this platform right here, but it's kind of uh, uh, being uh, present in uh, one of your AWS S3 block storage and uh, uh, the data kind of resides there and it's not on the platform, so it's secure. Uh, we're gonna cover a bit more on the architecture later, so it covers like uh, how and why the data is being stored, uh, not on this place, and but on the uh, secure uh, AWS storage you have. So all the tables will, uh, will pop up here when you kind of click it. Moving on, uh, the next one is clusters. Uh, in clusters, uh, basically based on the, uh, this architecture, whatever job you create or whatever job you develop, uh, is is actually running on a cluster. So this is cl this cluster is uh, can be easily created using like the plus cluster icon. You decide on the master node and the worker nodes and the number of worker nodes. Then it kind of opens up the cluster there, and all the jobs you develop and deploy kind of run there. So all your code kind of runs there. You use this uh, window to execute it, but the, at the end of the disk, uh, day, uh, because uh, Databricks is a managed service, so you kind of. Uh, uh, deploy your jobs onto the cluster once you create it. So once uh, you you have developed something and yeah, you, you are sure to move it into production, this is a unified platform as discussed. You can easily move your jobs, the developed jobs and the developed notebook uh, into this and kind of create a, a recurring job. And this will execute and productionize your workload. So that's the idea. And uh, so the second last is uh, the models tab. Uh, so once you create models, uh, they kind of gonna pop up here and you'll be able to see uh, the models being created, created by whom, last modified. So all the version is kind of preserved in, in this fashion as well. So very interesting to see this part where uh, basic data can be converted into models in a single place uh, 
very easily. So that's the best part. Like uh, all the things are kind of covering every use cases or uh, every use case of your uh, uh, work streams. Uh, last but not the least, this is just the search bar. You can search for notebooks and uh, models or etc. They're going to pop up here when uh, this kind of uh, has a lot more things, which is not the case right now. Moving on. So uh, this is the base of the workspace, which you'll get. Good way to collaborate with cross-functional teams, right? Uh, 